Hello viewers, today let us study about the American War of Independence. The American War of Independence is one of the most seminal movements of history. It was the first successful revolt that colonized population led against a colonial power in modern history. The success of the revolution influenced the shaping of the contemporary world. The United States, given the nature of its revolution, became the spokesperson of liberty across the world. The American War of Independence began on the 19th of April 1775. It culminated on the 11th of April 1783. The major contestants in the war were the British and the population that inhabited the 13 colonies of the British in North America. Apart from the British, the Dutch, the French and the Spanish governments were also involved in the war. The war was fought across the globe in regions such as North America, Gibraltar, Central America, Africa and even India. One of the biggest results of the war was the formation of the United States. The navies of the European powers fought over the Caribbean Sea, the Indian Ocean, the Atlantic Ocean. In many ways, it was the first war that had ramifications across the globe. Some historians even stated the First World War. Within a year of the initiation of the war, the 13 colonies of England in North America grouped together. They declared themselves as sovereign nation and christened the country, the United States of America. American War of Independence is a seminal event in the history of the United States. The founding fathers of the United States were law-abiding citizens to begin with. Then how come did they revolt? The first people to have arrived in America were the pilgrims who arrived on the Plymouth. From 1600 onwards, the English population in America braved numerous odds to survive. They were loyal subjects of the crown. They put up with tough taxation, inclement weather, hostile natives and difficult landscape. Religion and language united them with England, which they deemed was their mother country. However, in the second half of the 18th century, the peace in America was shattered as people revolted. As Malcolm Gladwell noted in his seminal work, The Tipping Point, there was numerous reasons for the revolt. Let us examine the seminal events that led to the war. Some of the events are political in nature, while a few are explicitly economic in nature. However, in most of the events, it is difficult to separate the economic logic from the political sense. 1754 to 1763, the French and Indian War. The war was fought on the American soil and featured the Britain and France. English won the war, but were deep in debt. They demanded more revenue from the colonies. With the defeat of the French, the colonies became less dependent on Britain for protection. This was the first reason. 1763. In 1763, the proclamation of 1763 was passed, which prohibited settlements of the whites beyond the Appalachian Mountains. While the Britain did not Intent to harm the colonists, many colonists took offense at the order. 1764, the Sugar Act. The act raised revenue by increasing duties on sugar imported from the West Indies. It placed a direct financial strain on the colonial population. 1764, the Currency Act. The English Parliament argued that the colonial currency had caused a devaluation which harmed the British trade. The English government banned American assemblies from issuing paper bills or bills of credit. 1764 Committee of Correspondence The Committee of Correspondence was set up by Samuel Adams. The committees were used to spread the propaganda and information through letters. These committees urged for more autonomy and advocated less influence from the mother nation on the affairs of the 
colonies. 1765, the Quartering Act. Britain ordered that colonists were to house and feed British soldiers if necessary. Since the British were wary of the influence of France and Spain in America, they periodically housed substantial portion of army in America. This order placed considerable direct economic strain on the colonies. 1765 The Stamp Act This act required tax stamps on many items and documents including playing cards, newspapers and marriage licenses. Prime Minister George Greenville stated this direct tax was intended for the colonies to pay for defending them from France and the hostile native population. Previous taxes imposed by Britain had been either direct or hidden. This was a direct taxation and the Stamp Act placed a great deal of economic strain on individuals. 1765 Stamp Act Congress In a direct consequence to the Stamp Act, in 1765, 27 delegates from nine colonies met in the New York City and drew up a statement of rights and grievances, thereby bringing colonies together in direct opposition to the British government. This was one of the earliest modes of organization that urged for greater autonomy and lesser intervention from the British government in the affairs of the colonies. 1765 Sons and Daughters of Liberty The colonists tried to fight back by imposing non-importation agreements. The Sons of Liberty often took law into their own hands, enforcing these agreements by methods such as tar and feathering. The Sons and Daughters of Liberty almost bordered on the illegal. By 1766, the colonial population was seething with rage. The compulsions of imperialism across the world led to the British government levying more taxes in its American colonies. For a colony which was very loyal to the crown, such acts were viewed as major moral trespasses. From 1767 onwards, events began to spiral and finally reached a point of no return. War was the only option. 1767, the Townshed Acts. These taxes were imposed to help make the colonial officials independent of the colonists and included duties on glass, paper and tea. Smugglers increased their activities to avoid tax leading to more troops in Boston. 1770, the Boston Massacre. The colonists and the British soldiers openly clashed in Boston. This event was used as an example of British cruelty. 1773, the Tea Act. To assist the failing British East India Company in India, the company was given a monopoly to trade tea in America. 1773, the Boston Tea Party. A group of colonists disguised as Indians dumped Tea overboard from three ships in Boston Harbor. This is more of a symbolic act. 1774 Intolerable Acts. These were passed in response to Boston Tea Party and placed restrictions on the colonist movements, including outlawing town meetings and the closing of the Boston Harbor for trade. 1774 First Continental Congress. In response to the intolerable acts, 12 of the 13 colonists met in Philadelphia in the month of September and October in 1774. One of the main results of this Congress was the creation of the association calling for a boycott of British manufactured goods. 1775, Lexington and Concord. In April of 1775, British troops were ordered to Lexington and Concord to seize colonial gunpowder and to capture Samuel Adams and John Hancock. At Lexington, open conflict occurred and eight Americans were shot dead. 
had conquered, the British troops were forced to retreat with the loss of 70 men. This was the first instance of open warfare. While the Lexington incident was used to depict the cruelty of the British, the Concord incident was used to strengthen the belief among Americans. 1775 Second Continental Congress All 13 colonies were represented at this meeting in Philadelphia during May. The colonies still hoped that the grievances would be met by King George III. George Washington was named the head of the Continental Army. 1775 Bunker Hill The major victory for the colonies resulted in King George III proclaiming the colonies in rebellion. In the end, the American Revolution grew out of increasing restrictions placed upon the colonies by the British. One interesting side note is that it is estimated about one-third of the colonists were interested in favor of a rebellion. One-third of the colonists sided with the British. The last one-third were neutral concerning the rebellion and breaking away from the Great Britain. The American War threw up many heroes. Let us examine the roles of a few individuals. George Washington was a member of the First Continental Congress. He was then chosen to lead the Continental Army. He was the President of the Constitutional Convention and of course became the first President of the United States of America. In all these leadership positions, George Washington displayed a steadfastness of purpose and helped create the precedents and foundations that would form modern America. The second character, John Adams. John Adams was an important figure in both the First and Second Continental Congress. He was named the commander of the Continental Army in the Second Continental Congress. He negotiated the Treaty of Paris and became the first vice president and the second president of the United States. The third character, Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson, as a delegate of the Second Continental Congress, was chosen to be a part of a committee of five that would draft the Declaration of Independence, a very powerful document. Thomas Jefferson was unanimously picked to write the Declaration. He was then sent to France as a diplomat after the revolution and then returned to become first the vice president under John Adams and then the third president of the United States of America. The fourth character, James Madison. James Madison is known as the father of the Constitution of the United States. He was responsible for writing much of its constitution. James Madison was one of the authors of the Federalist Papers that helped persuade the state to accept new constitution. He was responsible for drafting the Bill of Rights, another equally powerful document which was added to the constitution in 1791. James Madison helped organize a new government and later became the fourth president of the United States of America. One has to keep in mind but all the four heroes emerged as the presidents of the United States. Benjamin Franklin would go down as the most versatile American of the 18th century. He was considered the elder statesman by the time of revolution and later he was a part of the Constitutional Convention. Franklin was a delegate to the Second Continental Congress. He was part of the Committee of Five that was to draft the Declaration of Independence and made corrections that Jefferson included in his final draft. Known for his scientific temperament and his economic logic, Franklin was central to getting French aid during the American Revolution. He also helped negotiate the Treaty of Paris that ended the war. Samuel Adams was one of the founders of the Sons of Liberty 
and organized the Boston Tea Party. He was a born revolutionary, a born radical. He was a delegate to both the First and Second Continental Congress and helped draft the Articles of Confederation. He later became the governor of Massachusetts. Thomas Paine authored the seminal piece Common Sense, which was published in the year 1776. He was a British citizen who wrote steadfastly in defense of the American colonies' quest for more autonomy and independence. The pamphlet Common Sense convinced many colonists and founding fathers of the wisdom of open rebellion against British if necessary. Further, he published another pamphlet called The Crisis during the Revolutionary War. The crisis helped spur the soldiers to continue the fight. And finally, the last hero that we study here is Patrick Henrik. Students of literature would know him as the radical revolutionary who, during his famous speech, said, give me liberty or give me death. Patrick was the governor of Virginia during the revolution. He also helped draft the addition of Bill of Rights to the US Constitution, a document which he disagreed, however, later on because of its strong federal powers. The American Revolution began in 1775 as open conflicts between the United 13 colonies and Great Britain. By the Treaty of Paris that ended the war in 1783, the colonies had already won their independence. While no one event can be pointed to as the actual cause of the revolution, the war began as a disagreement over the way in which Great Britain treated the colonies versus the way the colonies felt that they ought to be treated. Americans felt they deserved all the rights of Englishmen. The British, on the other hand, felt that the colonies were created to be used in the way that best suited the interests of the Crown and the British Parliament. This conflict is embodied in one of the rallying cries of the American Revolution. No taxation without representation. Now, what led to Americans independent way of thinking. 1. The geographical considerations. The distance of the colonies from Great Britain created an independence which was hard to overcome. Those willing to colonize the new world generally had a strong independent streak desiring new opportunities and freedom. Most of the inhabitants of the US colonies wanted more autonomy and more freedom. Secondly, colonial legislatures. The existence of colonial legislatures meant that colonies were in many ways independent of the crown. The legislatures were allowed to levy taxes, muster troops and pass laws. Over time, these powers became rights in the eyes of many colonists. When they were curtailed by the British, a conflict ensured. The future leaders of the United States were born in these legislatures. Thirdly, salutary neglect. Even though the British believed in mercantilism, Prime Minister Robert Walpole ensured a view of salutary neglect. This was a system whereby the actual enforcement of external trade relations was lax. He believed this enhanced freedom would stimulate commerce. And finally, the Enlightenment. Many of the revolutionary leaders had studied major writings of enlightenment, including the works of Hobbes, Jean Locke, Jean Rousseau, and Voltaire. From these writings, the founders found concepts such as the social contract, limited government, and the consent of the governed, and the separation of powers. The ideology that led to the war manifests itself in the documents that were drafted after the war, which include the Bill of Rights, the Declaration of Independence, and even the Paris Treaty. The Bill of Rights are the first ten amendments. Those are freedom of religion, speech, press, and assembly. Also, the right to petition the government. Secondly, the right to bear arms. 
Third, troops may not be quartered in homes in peacetime. Four, no unreasonable searches or seizures. Five, numerous protections against court action including grand jury, indictment required for serious crimes, no double jeopardy, a person cannot be forced to testify against themselves, no loss of life, liberty or property without due process, right to a speedy public and impartial trial, jury trials are required in civil suits where value exceeded $20, no excessive bail or fines and no cruel or unusual punishments. Rights not listed are not necessarily denied. Powers are not given expressly to the United States of America or denied to the states themselves are reserved to the states. The second document the Declaration of Independence. The Declaration of Independence is arguably one of the most influential documents in the history of the world. Countries have adopted its tone and manner in their own documents and declarations. For instance, France was inspired by the document when it drafted the Declaration of Rights of Man and the Women's Rights Movement wrote its Declaration of Sentiments. A resolution of independence passed the Philadelphia Convention on July 2nd and this was all that was necessary to break away from Britain. The colonists had been fighting Great Britain for 14 months while proclaiming their allegiance to the crown. Now they were breaking away. Obviously they wanted to make things clear on exactly the reasons why they had to take these actions. Hence they presented the world with Declaration of Independence which was drafted by Thomas Jefferson. Jefferson was 33 year old lawyer. The text of the declaration can be compared to a lawyer's brief. It presents a long litany of grievances against King George III and included items such as taxation without representation, maintaining a standing army during peacetime, dissolving the houses of representatives and hiring large armies of foreign mercenaries. The analogy is that Jefferson is an attorney presenting his case before the world court. Not everything that Jefferson wrote was exactly correct. However, it is important to remember that he was writing a persuasive essay, not a historical text. The formal breakup from Great Britain was complete with the adoption of this document on July 4th, 1776, the day the United States of America came into being. The third most important document is the Treaty of Paris, which officially ended the American Revolution. The treaty invoked the name of the Most Holy and the Undivided Trinity. It began with having pleased the Divine Providence to dispose the hearts of the most serene and most potent Prince George III by the grace of God, King of Great Britain, France, Ireland, the Defender of Faith, the Duke of Brunswick and Lüneburg, Arch Treasurer and Prince Elector of the Holy Empire, etc., and of the United States of America to forget all misunderstandings and differences that have unhappily interrupted the good correspondence and friendship which they mutually wish to restore and to establish such a beneficial and satisfactory intercourse between the two countries upon the ground of reciprocal advantage and mutual convenience as may promote and secure to both perpetual peace and harmony. It is a very persuasive document. The impact of the war had far-reaching ramifications on the world. The cry of the liberty equally resonated across Europe as France was inspired by the United States. In the 19th century, the US had to fall back on the legacy of war as it dealt with the question of race and color. Often the legacy of war is invoked as a moral compass by various governments in the US. 
US became the watchdog of liberty and economic prosperity in the modern world due to the war. The resilience of the founding fathers, their steadfast commitment to liberty and their emphasis on economic prosperity shaped the evolution of Western capitalism. Colonies of various colonial powers in the 20th century and even in the 19th century adopted the US slogans including no taxation without representation, give me liberty or give me death as they fought imperial powers. The US model of democracy was also adopted across the world thanks to the legacy of the war. Dear learners, we have come to the end of the lesson, American War of Independence. It was a seminal event in the world and I hope this lesson has inspired you to read more about it. It was nice meeting you. Thank you.